In our last example, we called a function perform search. Now, we haven't actually written perform search yet other than to have an empty shell. So let's go ahead and start to do that. And we're going to see some similarities that you might notice from our previous load JSON function that we created earlier to get just a list of quotes from the system. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit, go into my perform search function, and I'm going to know a couple of things. First off, I'm going to need to make an AJAX call just like we've done with other things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an AJAX call to my search file. I'm going to use the get operator just like before. And once again, for good coding standards, I'm just going to go ahead and put my closing parenthesis on the new line because I know I'm going to have multiple lines for my parameters. The file in this instance is going to be called quote dash search dash list dash json dot php. Comma for new parameter. Then I need to pass my search parameter. If I were to look inside of quote dash search dash list dash json dot php, I'm going to notice that I'm looking for a URL parameter called term. This is the search term we're going to use. So I'm going to specify term colon and then I'm going to get a jQuery selector to get the information from that search box. And I'll use the val method in order to get the contents of that text box. My last parameter, of course, is my return function. Now, I might be looking just up ahead of my code from my previous load-json, and I'm going to notice that I'm going to probably have a lot of very similar things. The JSON data I'm actually going to be getting is going to be the same. So then I could say, well, maybe I just need to copy and paste my code from before. That seems like a good idea. There's a couple of potential problems with it. First off is what happens if we want to change our JSON data in a little bit. So either JSON data format changes or what we want to do with it changes. It'd be nice to have it in just one place so we only have to make one change. The second thing we may notice is that if we have a second copy of the function, this means that we have to download the function twice. This means it's going to take more time for the end user and it's going to provide a slower experience for them to visit our website. Therefore, what we would like to do is anytime we can reuse a function, we like to pull that information off into another function call and then just call that function, maybe passing a parameter that we need. This is good programming practice, whether you're programming in JavaScript or some completely different language. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another function that I can call. So all I have to do is pass data in and I get back the string that I'm going to wind up inserting into the web page. So I'm going to make sure that I'm outside of my perform search. I'm going to create a new function. I'm just going to call this build quote display. I'm going to pass in some data. Now, since we've used data before as a variable name, we can either use that or we can use a different name. It does not matter. I'm going to call this quote string. So this is going to be a string of text we're going to get back from the server. I'm going to give the open and close parenthesis. Then what I want to do is I want to look at what do I have before in my load JSON function and what do I need to send it so that I can have a good piece of information. Now my load JSON, I'm prepending the information to the quotes tag. With this perform search, I'm going to want to replace that. I don't want to append it to something that's already there and cause confusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass the data that gets sent and generate the string response that'll be all my quote tags. And then I'll let the load JSON or perform search, either one, insert it into the web page. So inside the load JSON function, I'm going to find all the pertinent information. We're going to parse the string into a data format. So I'm a JavaScript object now. We're going to create a string and where I'm going to build that string. Select that whole piece and I'm going to cut it. I can use Control X or Command X if I'm on a Mac or I can go to Edit, Cut. I'm going to come down to my function Build Quote Display and I'm going to paste. One thing I do want to take note of is my very first line. I'm looking to parse a variable called data. 
Now I don't have a variable called data. Therefore, what I want to do is I want to replace where I have dollar sign dot parse JSON where I pass in the variable data. This needs to be my quote string. This data name, because we're assigned to a new variable, it can stay the same. But I probably want to use the var keyword. It gives us a slight performance issue and make sure there's no confusion as to what variable is being referenced. I'm going to select the multiple lines. I can do that by clicking and holding and dragging over multiple lines or click, then move my mouse cursor up to my top line and shift click to select multiple lines. And then I'm going to hold shift and tab just to line things up a little bit better in case your text editor does not auto fix the indent. Once this is done, I need to know what am I going to do with this string that I've created in my build quotes. So what I want to do is I want to return this string. And by return a string, it just means I'm going to send it back to where my function call originated from. To do so, I'm going to use the keyword return and then the variable that I built, str. Up inside that load JSON, I need to now call build quote display and assign what it gets returned into a variable. So I'm going to specify var str equals build quote display and I'm going to pass in the data variable that got passed to us when we called quote dash get dash list dash json and this one line because it's now in another function does all of what we used to have over five or six lines but where this becomes really beneficial to us is down here in perform search because now I can do the exact same thing var and I can give a variable name. It does not have to be str. It could be something completely different if we want to. Variable names are there for your and my convenience, not for the computers. But for consistency, I'm going to still call this one str equals build quote display. Once again, I'm passing data in because that is the variable name inside my return function. Then I need to display this information. So I say dollar sign and create a jQuery selector for quotes. Remember, this is a div where we're going to store our quotes that we're going to display. This could be any tag that has an ID of quotes, or we could change the ID to be any tag with any ID that we want to use. In this case, however, Instead of prepending like we did with load JSON, we're going to convert to HTML. And this is going to replace anything that was there before. Now, when the user performs a search, we're going to replace any content that was originally inside of our quotes div with the new display that we've created when we called our function build quote display.